Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing um, how to behave when you see your in-laws. Um, Nima was going to say something. Yes, yeah, so um, Pastor Dejumo talked about coming in. The things that I think are practical. So when you come in the first time, you, of course you pick the first seat when you're offered. Or if you are not yet offered a seat, you sit very prim and proper. That's what I did. You, when you're served, you must appreciate them by after finishing trying to take your dishes. My father on the other side will tell you if they are from a good, warm family, they will not allow you to get into the kitchen. Somebody, because you're not there to serve yet. So you, after you finish, once you're taking up, can I go? Somebody will say, no, no, don't worry, because they're hosting you as well. So it should be both ways. And that was how it was done for me. Somebody took my plates to the kitchen. Mm. I knelt when I came in because I thought that was the rule. But when I noticed the rule of the house, I became very safe. Mm. No need to. <laughs> nobody was but, kneeling anywhere. Yeah. But, you know, it is also rule. When you see their culture, do not disrespect the so culture. So, you're marrying a Yoruba you know? man. Maybe this video is ah. a good advice for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So. <laughs> yeah, like like, she's, no, that, like she said, see, I'm a very respectful person. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Growing up, I was the child that before you, like, if you're around me, before you even ask for water, yeah. bought water, mm -hmm. that's room temperature, uh, uh, that is me. That, that's my that's my person, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm if I'm married to in a culture where people mm -hmm. kneel down, what does it take? I'll kneel down now. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. But like she said, double standards. If your kids are not kneeling down for you, uh. then you want me to come and kneel down. Like Let me work. take this call. Good morning, Christopher. Are you there? Hello, Christopher, are you there? You're live. Okay, we have some comments on social media. I think we lost our call. So, you know, I mean, we're gonna be wrapping up on this, but I think um, so what the pastor said is something that, as I said before, all of us, many women, especially yeah. Yoruba girls that I know, were told privately that when you get to the house, just sit down. Finish don't your go, food if you have don't, visited you know, a Muslim just be, family, for but, instance. But in other cultures, it might not be like that. Yes, if you're visiting it sound as a, a shock Muslim family, people. my father was Tebligh, Ali Suna. If you visit our house and don't finish your food, you have insulted the family. Or you don't touch your food. There are so many rules. You see, so just note the rules of the family. Mm. The guy you're dating, ask him, what, what do I need to know about your exactly. people? How do you people do? And I used to joke around. I would just tell them, if you come to my parents' house and my mother makes, because my mother will make an effort to make your food herself, make sure you eat that food. You will now see someone that will come and think they're doing the right thing. No, I, no, thank you. No, thank you. Mm. And the food that has been offered to you, that has been made, Bad. you know, prepared no. for you. You know, you miss you have a bad uh, upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. So when we visit any place as a culture, no matter how full I am, except I'm fasting, I will take something from what I'm giving. And if I can, I must finish it. Okay, let me Every continue. Drop. What are the parts the, the, the past where the that pastor part. said that when you kneel down, mm -hmm. look down. Don't be staring. Or look as if you're... You mean kneeling. kneeling. You don't no. need to look I down, beg, but I kneel, beg, let yeah. them see that you're kneeling. I beg, slavery, slavery has been abolished. <laughs> but let me answer the main thing I wanted to talk <laughs> yeah, about, I mean? right? Yes. Um, so I wanted to respond to the man that you said went to visit somebody. I talked yeah. about this area. So first off, I respect a man that can sweep the streets to put food on the table on my table. I don't care what, what it is, as far as you're hard working. So I think that that should be the elastic for parents. Mm. Like, is the man a hard worker? Mm -hmm. And is he able to provide or do whatever it is within him? He, he, he might come in as a bank manager and lose his job the next day. Anything can happen, but you want to be sure that your daughter is with a man that takes care of his responsibility and will do anything in terms of <laughs> honest work, yeah. right? Even if it might not be the standard that you hope it would be, everybody wants the best, but mm -hmm. a hard worker, it's, it's super important. For okay, me, let me take this matter. call. Chinedu is calling from Enugu. You're live. Hello, Chinedu. Yeah, good morning, Murad. You're live. Go ahead, please. Mm. Yeah, I'm the first time caller. Welcome to the show. Okay, um, in order to this talk, I want to share a personal experience. When, when I was marrying my wife, going to my adult house for the first time, I had no car. I just came out from the port. Come and see this area. Pulled on my well iron brocade. <laughs> I entered into my mother in law's house with a wet dress, wet suit, and everything. I had to go to one room. The room I dressed to start ironing it. <laughs> Try all my clothes. Before I now come and start telling them I want to marry your daughter. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's serious, I will never forget. Mm. Now, my wife, the same way I took my wife to my house, in, the, in order to impress my mother, she joined my mother in the kitchen, and she broke my father's most important place. 
So, no matter how we try to, you know, prepare, just like my sister Maka said, you can do happen. I believe it's good for you to just alter yourself and get yourself together when you're going to see your own loss. But when the mistake happens, you are safe with family. Yeah. Because thank there's, you thank you very much, Chinedu. There's a way you go to your, your in law, prospective in law's house, mm. and the mother is in the kitchen, you're not seeing the living room. That, no, that, no. that is mad. That, that's, that's, no matter what culture or what manner. tribe you're from, yeah. you go in the kitchen to support and help them. I mean, so it's just, it's just reasonable. What if Mariam you start was saying, the body to sit down? To Mariam, not worry. Mm. You force yourself. Uh -huh, that's another thing. Mariam is saying here that the pastor is only talking about etiquette. We all, in one way or the other, try to imbibe Unibu etiquette. Eating with our mouth, mouths closed, the right cutlery. Curtsy, you know how you curtsy um, to the queen, but with the moment we start talking about Nigerian cultural etiquette, we start to shout. So the truth that we all learn, even abroad, when you eat your fork and knife the right way, how to put the wine, how to use the glasses, how to use the napkins, mm. these are things that we all learn. And when you go out, imagine your in-laws' parents are inviting you to dinner in a nice world of Astoria restaurant. You're in the hotel, and, you know, you would do a certain way because that's how they were taught. But now to come to their house, but they were shouting, is it an interview? Is it a, uh, no, but a you will not... slavery? We're now making no, look as if no, they're, they're forcing you to do something else. If you have been well brought up, you will go to a house and you will be respectful. Mm -hmm. You, if you have been taught to kneel, you will kneel. If you have been taught to enter the kitchen, you will enter the kitchen. You will be respectful. Exactly. You will not be a rude person. Exactly. But the minute you are who you are not, mm -hmm. by not... <clears throat> because my own fear is when you are who you are not, when you enter inside that marriage, you will show who you are. So, for example, yeah. okay, let, me stay, let me stay with you on that. So, imagine you invite... Your um, your husband, your, your son's wife, or your your family member to a dinner at a nice five star restaurant in the UK, and the, what who he is is to use his hand. He's, he's not going to use a fork and knife because he doesn't know how to use a fork. Wait, well, let me finish now. Mm. So he's in the dining room with you and your friends. You're calling you all your cousins and family from the UK to come and meet this your son's new wife or your daughter's new husband. And he comes in and he puts a fork and knife on this corner. And say, I'm going to use, I'm going to eat my ham because that's what I, I'm what fine. Is wrong with that? I'm just telling you, mm. we, no, we, now we are saying what is wrong with that. Mm. But the truth is that many of us who condemn that, ah, imagine he came, was using his hand. He was sniffing, was too open, eating with his mouth open. These are etiquettes that we have been taught not to do, especially when we go to formal dinings. But now when it comes to African setting, we make it look as if you are being forced to act like a slave or forced to um, bid for an oh, interview. So, yeah, so well, I'm just saying, how do you now draw the line? Why can, I'm coming to Waiki on that question. Um, Without him to eat rice with his hand? If he's eating rice, because in my own culture, it's eba and amala that you eat with your hand. Uh -huh. So if it's rice, you decide to eat with your hand, I would say, ah, this one doesn't know how to use knife and fork. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to judge him and say, Uses oh. Uses a spoon, that he did not put it on his left hand. I would not. I will not. Me too, yeah. I would. Right. So if, was, if he uses a spoon, yeah. for, for me now, me even I use a spoon, I, even I, 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 I even even at my fault bad in a way it's yeah. proper, they put all this, I do not set it. The moment I get to any place, I switch, I only eat with my right hand. I am Muslim, if you don't like it, that's your business. I will switch it to that hand and I will let you know. If, you should, if, if I notice, sorry, I'm Muslim, I only eat with my right I don't do queens, I don't do with my left. So simple. You explain it respectfully and you continue. I don't know you want, eat a knife. Muslims eat with fork and knife, but can only eat with your right hand. So if you see a Muslim pretending and struggling, that person is just pretending for you. That, or is not a conscious Muslim. So, so uh, I wanted to add that, you know, the, where some people win the enemies is where you bring those biases. There was this girl who was dating somebody from my place, they're from the Agbedes. And so she was dating an Agbede guy, but his brother was dating a Yoruba girl. They thought the girl did not know. So my people have this thing of speaking our language and, you know, saying all their toxicity. So the girl will come and say, hey, the girl will kneel down. She's Yoruba. She will say, ah, I don't mind that pretender. She, she will say, ah, she's pretending. She will go to the kitchen. She, they, you know, the girl that's from their place is hearing them. She will just sit down, JJ, and be looking at them. And they'll be like, this one not the hear what. She won't say anything. When fast forward, the, girl, the Yoruba girl came in. She now became so, she became a tyrant. You want to visit our husband? You did not write us. You didn't call us. You can't just show up, you know, and give them so many rules. She'll come for salary. Oh, no, 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 she can't do this. So, she decided to say, ah, she was pretending all that time. When she came, and she was herself, were you people even nice at all in your language? You bring your biases, you judge the person. You, when she's herself, you say, no, they did not raise you well. Now, me, they greet so, me down finish. Now, me, they stand on top. You know, all those rules you put down. Over time, you lose the friendship. We took a topic this week 
on the elders, the aged mother, and I think. Mm. And we said, mm. win the friendship because you are the one who will need it later. Mm. If your, somebody is marrying your brother, it's better for you to be friends with that person mm. from the get go. Let her be her normal self. Just know herself, how she is, okay. and make life easy for everybody. Have a call. I'll come no to you, Amaka. Sunday, thanks for calling. You're live. Good morning, Sunday. You're live. Okay, go ahead, Amaka. Okay, thank you. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I just want to, I want to appreciate you for this program, and I think you will be doing it on your own. But I want to keep this on me. Now, we are talking about this issue of uh, defense depression from uh, the spouse or probably a gay or so. Now, the issue is who is to be impressed? Is it the man who wants to take a lady in as a wife or the mother in law? You see, in most cases, you see some of these are men, young ladies. I mean, the young men giving the appearance a script to act when they get to their home, especially when they meet with its mother. I don't think this is good enough. You see, you should allow the lady to be what she is. The way she sees things, the way she does things, if they are asking. Okay, I didn't hear him very well, but thank you very much, Mr. Sunday, for sharing your views. So you don't give her a script yeah, that she must act out. If she's a disrespectful yourself. person, she's a disrespectful person. Mm -hmm. She comes in, ah, hi. Eh? Hello. Is she it me? Are you saying hi? That, that's a different thing. Person, eh? You see two old people, and you say, hey, hi. Hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. Eh, what's up? Yeah. That's not how you greet. No, no, no normal family will accept that kind of greeting. Ah, what's up? Eh? You may not say anything, you just say, hey? <laughs> ah, hey, this one is an air on that my son wants to bring into this house. See, where, where do we draw the line of not judging people? Because one thing, somebody comes in and says, what's up to you? Mm -hmm. And as a family, you're already judging that. That person is maybe, maybe from where he or she is coming from, that's how they greet, and that's ah. normal to him. Well, all so, of them are not normal in their family. Okay. Or they are normal in their own so, way, but not normal draw in the own line, so, so, I I'm not judging so, people. I, so I disagree when people say, that the Western world, that they don't have culture and respect. I disagree. Because people from the real home, people, there are people from homes. How you raise your kid is what matters. And people, please, people, people have culture and respect abroad. And people train their children the right way. So, but even in Nigeria, we also have people that are rude, people that are uncouth, the same way we have every other place yeah. in the world. We, you know the difference between right and wrong. wrong, just that you've chosen to be a certain way. Mm. Let me go to what I was saying about the eating uh, habits. Like, I grew up in a family where the dining must be set, cutlery set. You must eat on the dining. That's how I grew up. So I grew up with that mindset that you must eat properly, right? But then, even, as, even for the fact that I grew up that way, I love to eat with my hands. I eat with my hands a lot. So I know how to do my proper fine dining. But then, if I'm in a certain way, I'm, 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 I'm always myself. I eat with my hands, right? And I would never look down or judge somebody that wants to, for, for using their uh, cutlery in an improper way. Because I'm one of the advocates of people that say, this life is too short. Why do I want to make someone uncomfortable in their skin? Because they want to eat food, the basic things. Like, th that's, that's just too basic. Uh, me, they even taught me how to use knife and fork. It's me that didn't hear. OK, we have to wrap <laughs> up on this. But let me just take this so call and we'll move on to our next topic. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Mm, you people have been talking here, right? And I like the woman, that uh, uh, woman preacher. Pastor yes. Adejumo, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is the way people should be, yes. Take it or leave it. On the first day, you don't want to show who you are. Name, we first of all affect you. If they don't accept you, you can't marry their son. It is not that that behavior of that day is what you are going to be using after all. You are still going to be living with that man, two of you, and they will not see you again. But in the admit, just do something to impress them. That's all. So that they can just say you are okay. And after all, when you are with your husband, you can even you know, be punching his nose. That is the two of you. But you can't try that. Mr. Festus, let me stay with you. Yes. So are you saying that 
if you were to receive your daughter-in-law or, or, or son-in-law, you expect them to put on an act, put on an act, just to, you know, to, because you'll be assessing them, right? So they can, so you can, they can pass the assessments. You're saying that they should put on that act. I don't know whether they are putting this or no, or it's natural. But what is paramount is that I must accept that person. So whether it's natural or fixed, I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Festus. The reason why I wanted him to go to that word assessment, because whether we like it or not, when well, you go for that assessment. first interview, it's there's an assessment, an assessment going on. Exactly. So you either pretend it's not there or mm. accept that you're being assessed by the family that you want to go into. So that's what the pastor was saying, that they, you are going for an assessment. They're going to be checking you out. Now, you don't, you don't have to be your real Amaka or your real Mariah yourself. But because it's an assessment, the same way when you go for an examination, you study specific for that subject. You don't take all the knowledge from other subjects to come and answer in that question. You are, you are prepared for that specific subject, and you go to the examination for that specific subject, not for something else. So if we, as women especially, have accepted the fact that when you're going to see your in-laws for the first time, it is an assessment. And because it's an assessment, you either put on the act, you either behave a certain way, so that that first assessment, you cross it over. So then... So your normal stuff can I, gradually come out. I Is agree, that what we're saying? I agree it's an assessment, but I know it's a lifelong result. So whatever you put as, a, as your assessment to come in, because somebody has to be impressed. I always say first impression is important. You put up what you can, but not when you are g going there to fake it, you make it kind of an example. Yeah. Fake it all. Okay, so I, someone said to somebody once that my parents would not like a particular girl from this culture. She said, no worry, when I get pregnant for you, we use pregnancy to put those all the away in. And then the mother-in-law shocked everybody and said, give me my big grandchild. I still will not, don't want to see you in my son's house. So, you know, don't fake it, you make it. Don't force anything. You know, being a proper girl, just as like your upbringing, let it show, be, your, be a good girl as you're raised. Don't be a bad representation of your own family at that event, at that, uh, on that particular meeting. And you move past that. But I have experienced, I, I, I said it again, some people will put their biases, not their family's culture. We are assessing a girl the way you raise your daughters. Not that you're assessing the girl, saying, no, I want you to be like this, but your daughters can do different. Mm, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Let her be able to be herself. My sister-in-law, the first day she came, she stayed. We just loved her. Everybody handed over their whatever. We, and she's, we've been like that till date. You, nobody has to test anybody to judge anybody. Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to bring any bo your biases in? We don't need, we do not expect anybody to need. Some people will ask you to crawl from here to Chukutu Kenji. So the girl that come, we need that for them to she enter and then be rude to everybody else. I saw a family where the Yoruba girl came in. She was kneeling down like a cat on, the, on that particular day. After that day, every, <laughs> and in Yoruba custom, like a, cat. a year old. Because oh. we, we've been to, to the I same place. We married from this. the same place. So don't, don't, don't mm. I don't want that pretending. Let I don't yeah, like it. Ahead, so I think that um, assessment should be more, should be based more on on um, important things like kindness. Character. Is the girl mm -hmm. kind? Kind. So even Character. if you want to put up an assessment, you can do something in your house that day that can showcase if that person is a kind person Richard. or what will be her reaction in a certain situation. Mm -hmm. Those are the important things. Mm -hmm. Not whether you ate with hand or yeah. cutlery or nice. whether you knelt down and became a slave nice. and crawled. Like, are you kidding me? Nice. That, those are, this is a marriage. The, the girlfriend the, washed yes. clothes and plates like, to, like tomorrow, no day. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, so that, that, that's, that's, that's a fantastic point you about that so for If we are all in agreement that it's an assessment, so the, the recipients, as the, the in-laws, mm -hmm. should also know that I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not assessing you based on how you eat, mm -hmm. how you stand, or how that's you sit. I'm assessing you based on character, mm -hmm. on your ability to be kind, to be Very compassionate. Yeah. So there'll be situations that we'll probably put together to see how you respond. So that will help us assess you as a kind person. So I think that, like, that's, that's, that's not a good way. If you kick the dog. Like, you kick the dog and say, ah, this is it. We can, this one will kick me. Go on, you come in and you, you step on all the you shoes. The dog. You, no, you carry your own shoe. You step on all the shoes and then go one place and pull your shoe. That shows disregard. That shows, you know, those are the kind of tests you should be looking at. Not that well, I should eat. Yeah, Somebody that, that comes be. in and cannot yeah. neatly put their shoes, that match all the other shoes and then go and pull yeah. your own one part. Those okay, are the I small, small things you look out for. I think in a nutshell, in a nutshell, you have a comment on social media. Go ahead, please. Ogumola Emanuel says, if I love and it's a norm in your house for prospective husbands, to sweep the compound before your parents and accept me, before your parents can accept me to marry you, I will sweep the street safe. <laughs> How they behave in Oyo is different from Anambra. If you know sit well, marry the culture that accepts your ego. Cody uh, Flunky Fex says, God knows I can't impress nobody's future in law. You better take me for me or forget about it. 
um, and my future wife, just be yourself. When meeting with your in-laws, boo, just know I'm not going to be, you're not going to be anybody's maid. Just remember, for me to choose you, and uh, you cannot, you're not going to be anybody's maid for me to choose you mm. and, and take you to meet my, your in-laws. You're perfect for me, and you will be loved, not judged by your in-laws. Okay. Yeah, to Nation Ike says, the first visit to your in-laws is very important because their son has introduced you as his choice. Any normal lady will be on their best behavior so as to make a positive impression. Okay, I'm I think that's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we move on to our second topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.